Ciao. Tech announces a whole new way to make pictures. Introducing disc photography. Well, I mean, it's not as bad as it was back in the day. At the same time, though, I mean, there there are problems with the simplicity thing as well. Like, um, like Apple One. Apple One is the only bundle you'll need, and there are three sizes. Mm-hmm. What's wrong yeah. with you? I mean, you can't call it Apple One if there are going to be three of them, can you? I mean, I guess you can because they are. Anyway. Yeah, or or Lisa, you know, uh, let's go ultimate simplicity. Let's that's call right. it a person's name. Call Lisa. it all Apple. That's right. Here's the thing. Here's what's going to happen. Apple's going to come up with an AI. The AI is going to figure out how much I have to give Apple every month. Mm-hmm. And for that, I'll get, you know, whatever. That's <laughs> eventually. I, you know what? You you joke about that. I We're already on, well, many of us are already on an Apple subscription plan. We just don't know it. Don't you know? Know it so yet. why not? Yeah. Why not have a plan that says, okay, you're going to get an iMac. You'll, you'll have the latest iMac, the latest phone, the latest iPad, and assorted accessories like HomePods, et cetera, for this fee every month. And, right. But you don't have to worry about it after that. <laughs> All right. So you have heard about, um, I'm sorry, really quickly. So I should have warned you about this. I started recording about 45 seconds ago. Is that That's okay? okay? All right, good. That's totally cool. That is I get, totally cool. I, can, like, I assume I'm, already, I'm always being recorded. I have, I have Amazon Echoes in the house, man. I, oh, <laughs> there you go. Right. So if we lose this recording, I'll just call Amazon and see if they've got it. <laughs> Frederick Van Johnson is here with us. He is the host of This Week in Photo, a, uh, a long-running uh, photography podcast, which we will uh, uh, get him to tell us more about in just a moment. You've heard about the Apple for Life thing, right? Is it Apple no, for Life I or iPhone heard. for Life? I can't remember. So I, I, I did a story about it on Mac OS kind of about a week ago, I think. And it is, I think it's iPhone for Life. I can't remember now. But basically, Apple has applied for a trademark in Hong Kong that's associated with hardware, uh, software, and financial services, I believe. Basically, Tony Sakanagi is going to get his dream at some point. He's going to get a subscription service that gives you Basically, you know, access to the Apple ecosystem for X amount of money yeah. per, well, lifetime, I suppose, because it's iPhone for life, which I think sounds you very, know, how do, very how do I, How do you feel about that? I how mean, do, we're already locked in, you know, for the most part. So, eh, uh, I mean, we're not I locked in because we can always go elsewhere. I mean, I'm not likely to. Can we, but though? Can, can we? Can I'm, we really? <laughs> I am waiting for something. Have you ever tried to try an, try an Android phone for just a month and incorporate that into your, your tech stack at home? It's, it's well, kind no. of pain. I mean, because because I've never owned the only time I've owned two phones at once. Like I still have my original iPhone somewhere, and I think I have my iPhone 3G in a backpack because I use it to record when I'm like at. Well, theoretically, I use it to record when I'm at conferences and stuff. Now I just use my regular iPhone. I don't even know why I still carry it, to be honest. But oh. anyway, hey, so there was actually a reason. I mean, this is a tremendous amount of fun, and I want to go ahead and say, will you come back and do a whole week of this show at some point? Absolutely. Okay, cool, cool. Because I want to go ahead and... say no to Mac OS 10, man? Oh, stop that. You're embarrassing me. All right, so here's the thing, though. The reason I wanted to get you on this week is because I've done a recap of the high-speed event, and then I actually did some feedback from the high-speed event as well. And not to, you know, slag anybody off, but you have a perspective on the event that I wanted to get in particular because it is so far outside of my perspective. Hmm. Apple sat there with the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max and said, here's all this camera stuff. And they might as well have said, I felt like one of the Peanuts characters because they were saying stuff and I was like, is it my turn to talk yet? Do I get to go now? And yet I'm watching it knowing that what they're talking about is absolutely amazing. So you were on uh, Mac Voices with me the other day. We were talking, and a bunch of other people, Not it wasn't just the two of us, and, and we were talking about how amazing the camera is, and then somebody asked you the question, will you retire your photo equipment, video equipment for an iPhone? And your answer was, not, of course not, but I think that was your answer. Talk to me about, <laughs> no. talk to me about all the professional stuff that Apple is putting in here, what that actually means for the pros does it mean anything for the pros or is it just for me to feel good about the fact that I have a professional level camera when I'm, you know, still taking bad pictures of my niece at her you, birthday? You know the answer to that. The answer to that is always yes to all of the above, right? So <laughs> it's yes 
from the from the perspective of do pros care about this stuff? Yes, they do, because it's a vector into what could be. But, you know, there there's one, you know, there's one school of thought. It's like, you know, I'm going to be bleeding edge. I'm going to try the latest and the greatest thing and I'm going to create billable work with it. And then there's the everyone else that says, you know what, that's great. I want that. But, you know, I'm going to keep creating the work with with my real quote, real stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, so the, the there's still I, in my mind, there's still that barrier between reality and your gear and your lenses and your you know all the the quote real photography stuff and this clearly it's a vector towards the future but can i really do work on it yet so you know it's kind of it's kind of those two worlds me personally i always want to have the latest and greatest phone with the latest and greatest cameras in it because i want to see what it can do i want to play with it but very rarely have i taken a photo that i felt like you know, this even even if it is superior to my full frame DSLR mirrorless cameras, it still feels like, you know, what that was, you know, apologetics. I shot it with the phone. It's OK for a phone. It's great for a phone. But let me get back to my real job over here and do real photography. But I want both of them. You know, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I want both of them. I just don't think the world's ready yet for to go full on iPhone. I may be wrong. I mean, people have done full productions and movies on them, yeah. but I think they're may, they may be at the very tip top of the uh, the pyramid, you know, in terms of uh, you know full on adoption. Let me ask you. Uh, okay, so what is it though? Because I told the story, and I, I can't remember if I told it on in a few minutes or not. So I'll tell it really quickly. We used to have uh, at a production facility where I worked years ago. We would have people come in and pay top dollar because they wanted to be in the Pro Tool suite. And in fairness, it had a really great recording studio as well. It almost hurt your ears how quiet that room was when you went in and shut the door because it just it sucked up all the noise it could. So it was a great recording studio, but the thing is what people really liked to see was the Pro Tools rig and all that stuff. And when they left, I would take you know the audio over to a computer that I actually felt comfortable using and knew how to use. It was not a Pro Tools rig. It was Adobe Audition on a Windows machine. But they had paid for, you know, I mean, they were paying for the show in a lot of ways. And that makes me sound like a horrible person. I'm not a horrible person. I mean, I wasn't charging them the money. Somebody else was. I was doing the job as best I could. And nobody ever came back and said, hey, this doesn't sound like it was done on Pro Tools because it all sounded the same. Which I guess brings me back to my question. When you say, I want to do billable on this. Like, if you gave me a picture that you shot with your stuff, and then you gave me a picture that you shot with an iPhone 12 Pro Max, am I going to know, or are you going to know? You're not going to know. Okay. You're, I'm going to know. I think that's it. You hit it right on the head. I'm I'm going to know, and it, it's it's kind of like Linus's comfort blanket, right? You know, mm-hmm. I want to go... I, I have my muscle memory for my my quote real gear. I know what what the optics do under certain situations. I'm handling everything. Of mm-hmm. course, I have to handle every single pixel because <laughs> I'm a real photographer, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna hand it off to some AI robot to make these decisions for me. I'm saying this facetiously. I was yeah, no, I understand. But, you know, but at the same time, it's it, but you hit it on the head with the with the Pro Tools versus Audition thing. There's there's a in in pro work there's the world it's a world of theater in a lot of ways especially when clients are looking over your shoulder this reminds me i'll tell a quick story i have a friend of mine that is a a a sony artisan you know one of their anointed photographers that speaks for them and uh we were at uh it was a conference in new york city and he was demonstrating uh some photography techniques to some clients or something and I remember he had this little mirrorless camera sitting on the table next to this array of gear kit. I mean, he had these big bodies and giant lenses and, you know, all this stuff that was like a house worth of gear sitting on the table. And his mirrorless camera there with one lens on it. And he said, you know what? I'm going to shoot the job with that little mirrorless camera. But all that other stuff has to be there so they feel like I know what I'm doing. It's theater. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Full on theater. And I, they don't care. At the end of the day, you, go, you don't go to a restaurant and eat a great steak or whatever your, your fancy is. And you don't say, wow, I wonder what cutlery that chef used <laughs> to prepare this. You care about the quality of the food. Same with photos. Yeah. But the chef would know. Right. The chef knows oh, that was a microwave meal. So it's not as good as if I had done it. But you may not even care in the dining room. It may taste great to you. So, you know, there is a weird thing about 
So I've been using a Blue Yeti microphone for Mac OS Canon for everything I've done probably for about nine years now. And I seriously bought it just to be on Mac Break Weekly because the only setup that I had that would work for Mac Break Weekly was a horrible like gaming headset. And it sounded terrible and I kept clacking into things and it was awful. So I did Mac Break Weekly, I think twice with that. And then I was like, I need a, I need a USB mic so it will look good on camera and sound good enough, right? Because for my podcast, I had a I had a I had like a two hundred dollar or something maybe more microphone. I can't remember because it's been too long. Plugged into a board that was you know, far too many channels and it had all the you know the EQ and all this stuff. It had, I mean, it was it was it was the kind of stuff that you would take out if you were going to record on the road, but like you're, you're doing serious recording and you're taking it on the road and something happened. I think the power on it blew the power supply or something plugged in my blue Yeti just to like, you know, as an emergency backup for Mac OS Ken. And nine years later, I'm still using it. <laughs> What's yeah, funny is actually, works. yeah, a friend of mine actually, he said on, uh, on, uh, on Twitter one day, he was like, stop using the blue Yeti for podcasts, podcasters, you need professional gear. And I wrote back to him and I was like, is this addressed at me? And he said, are you using a Blue Yeti? And it's like, yeah, because, you know, and nobody knows. Because eh, the other thing is you're bouncing it down to 96. I mean, we get in our habits, I guess, is the thing. And that's the other thing that I wanted to hit with you. Is it, is it the lack of control? Is it just the habit? Is it the, well, I guess you said you have to control every bit of it because, I mean, it's the artistic process. You're the artist. Of course, you have to have your hand on everything. Even though, you know, there's this multi-hand thing in your hand that's like, no, seriously, I got it if you'll let me. Yeah, I think I think we're, it, it, you know, the analogy is kind of like when, when the world shifted, no pun intended, from manual transmission vehicles to automatic. And, mm -hmm. you know, all, there there was the, the crowd of people that said, you know, you could, I would never drive one of those automatic things. There's no way a computer or a gearbox can shift as efficiently or as smart as I can do. Fast forward to today, and we've got paddle shifters and self-driving cars, and the computers are much better than we could ever be as fallible humans behind the wheel with all of our failings. Same thing with this stuff, I think. You know, I think we're kind of at that gray area between these two technologies, and, and maybe a lot of it is going to be attrition. You know, the, these people that were used to using older gear and lenses. And in my day, we used to dip our paper in chemicals and see the image appear. You yeah. know, that that's going to be in the pages of the history book as we look forward to this AI based digital world. You know, I think it's it's clearly going in that direction. But, yeah, right now it feels like we're at the middle of it. So a lot of it is comfort. And it's like I know how to make a great stunning portrait. I know where to put the lights. I know how much light to put on my subject. I know what fill light to use. I know how to set the camera. I know the aperture. You know, I know everything I need to do in order to get that perfect shot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, so you have to think of it from, okay, I've been doing that for decades and decades and getting that perfect shot. And now you, Apple, rolls in with this device that can do a better job, presumably, than me and give me the ability to make choices after the fact. I'm, I'm going to be resistant. You know, it's kind of like telling somebody their religion is wrong. You need to go, you know, you need to go in this other direction because this religion is better, you know, and you've spent your entire life, decades even on this one religion. Right. So yeah. now you've had all this, these sunk costs. And you're like, no, I'm going to stick with mine no matter what. You know, well, and there is so, something yeah, interesting. There is something to the artistry part of it as well. I mean, um, this is boring to people, but I, I've said it before and it's not nearly what you're doing, but I taught myself to make paper a couple of years ago. Do you know what? There is no shortage of in the world paper. There's no paper. need for me to make paper, but I decided I wanted to learn to do that. There are times and I'm not a photographer by any stretch of the imagination, but I had the good fortune of being able to spend time uh, in, a, in a dark room for a while. And there are times that I miss that artistry. And I know that, I, you know, with um, Pixelmator, I know with Pixelmator, I can recreate a bunch of that stuff on my computer. No chemicals required, no leaving the house required, none of that stuff required. But, you know, I don't I don't get that smell. I don't get that moment, that old timer moment that you were talking about. If we used to dip it in the uh, dip it in the uh, acid bath or whatever. And, you know, up would pop this image from, you know, mm -hmm. seemingly nowhere. I mean, there's a 
There's something great about all that. So I'm not trying to talk you out of doing what you're doing. I'm just curious about sort of that, you know, dichotomy in a way. Now, I got to ask really quickly. I think you said the other day on Mac Voices, but you're getting what for the new iPhone? Uh, which model am I getting? Or Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get whatever the biggest the biggest one. Okay. I like the big phones. I like the big phones. So the, it'll, but I don't need the 512. Probably the what will it be? The iPhone 12 Max? 12 Pro Max. Pro Max. So I'll end up with that one with 256 uh, gigs of RAM in it. That's it. Okay. So. 256. Interesting. Because I have a friend. Yeah. Uh, do you know Mike LaPont? No, I don't think so. Uh, Mike always buys. He used to host a show with me called iChart Radio, and he was uh, the Easy Mac podcast. Uh, actually, predates Mac OS Ken, but he stopped doing that a while ago. Um, and he's been on this show before. He used to. I haven't asked him lately, but he used to say, uh, oh, you know, he would, he would max out his storage a- as best he could. Like, whatever the biggest one they had as far as storage, that's the one he would get. I'm kind of surprised to hear that you're not doing that as well. Is that reliance on the cloud or just... I got to save money somehow. Yeah, it's it's mainly because the uh, I, I have found that I've never ever used all the space on any of the iPhones that I've owned, hmm. not even one time. Okay. So you know, and and normally I'm under 200 gigabytes. So you know, I'll I tend to buy phones that are right at the 256 level. Because I never run out. And maybe that's because of the, my sort of my process flow for how I manage my data. From time to time, I offload photos. You know, I don't use the phone as sort of an ongoing, growing toilet paper roll of my photographic life, right? So I'll, I'll, <laughs> t- I'll, take, I'll take everything off of it from time to time and organize them and, you know, put them where they need to be. And I use the phone sort of as a transient capture device versus the source of truth for you know, for my chronology. So in, you know, in, that, in that case, you don't need that much space, you know, especially with cloud based solutions like Adobe Lightroom and uh, Lightroom Mobile and Google and whatever your whatever your your flavor is. There's no real need to keep gigabytes and gigabytes of photos on your phone as if you need to find your daughter's first steps like eight years ago. OK, I need to go find that picture. You know, you could you could probably find it some other way. The other thing of it is I think it's just my paranoia of not wanting all my data on there, period. Mm. I just don't I just don't want it all on there. I want a segment of it, maybe a running couple of weeks, but not a running couple of years or decades. That's really interesting because I will actually go back and, you know, thumb through. And sometimes it's not my not not the best thing. It's like, oh, wow, I still have a picture of that person. Okay. <laughs> but other times, you know, it's like, oh, neat. I remember that time that I went there. And, you know, then there's always the, when the heck was I there? Um, let me ask you uh, really quickly, because I had said that we would make sure that people know uh, how to find, where to find. Uh, where do you want people sure. to find you and where do you want people to find the show? Um, all roads lead to thisweekinphoto.com. That's my podcast. It is also a a community of passionate photographers and um, a couple of other things. So it's kind of like just the the center of the This Week in Photo universe is there. There's a couple of cool things that will be happening on the site over the next couple of weeks before the end of the year as we record this. Um, and it should get pretty exciting over there. We're even revamping the podcast. So like you said, This Week in Photo has been around a long time uh, and we're going to do a control alt delete on the podcast itself the site and the community so it's pretty exciting for 2021